I think it's going to come together. If you say so. Oh, no, tell me. No, no. <laughs> My idea was to get the orange mousse nice and firm and set lemon and whiskey jelly discs inside the mousse. But my mousse just isn't setting firm enough. And when I put my frozen jelly discs into there, they're just thinking, oh. That element of surprise is just not going to happen. So I'm going to have to rethink how I plate this dish up. What the hell is that? I'm not going to panic. I have some really beautiful elements and those pressure tests haven't been for nothing. I've actually learnt some really amazing skills from them. Yeah, I'm not giving up. Ten seconds. Nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. That's it. Time's up. I think I'm in trouble. Oh. It definitely terrifies me that I have never tasted a whiskey sour or know what goes in it and then had to create a dish based on it. I'm feeling a bit rubbish. I didn't get half my elements on the plate. So my caramel dome hasn't worked and my whiskey cherries are still sitting in the pot. I'm just kicking myself. In the last minute, I forgot to put the lemon segments onto the plate, and, and that was the sour element. I all got a bit hectic at the end, and I just forgot that piece of the puzzle. Except for you for doing that, are we? Yeah. I'm actually really happy right now <laughs> because you're emotional and you're upset about yeah. your food because you've got a standard. Yeah. And that's why I love you so much. <laughs> Do you know why? Because you care. Yeah. Hold your head up, be proud. Yeah. yeah. You've done your best. That's it. And that's all we can ask for, right? Okay. Thank, Thank you. Thanks, mate. This was a Heston-inspired invention test, and in this case, it was about taking a liquid, turning it into a solid, a whiskey sour into something creative and interesting. And I don't think we've seen, as an emotional cook, as a serious cook in this kitchen for a long time. Not surprising when you're, in, when you're trying to impress somebody like Heston Blumenthal. So we forgive you, it's okay. First dish we'd love to taste, though, belongs to Georgia. Looking down at my dish, I'm devastated. I can't believe that that's what I've just done in the last hour and that Heston is going to eat that. I'm mortified. What is it, Georgia? Today I've made a whiskey sour jelly with meringue, lemon curd, berries and a maraschino syrup. What's happened to it? Um, it's semi-set. I think there's lots of sour and fresh flavours, and it's the right sourness. I'll, I'll give you that. When you have a whiskey sour, that's the sour. But, you know, the jelly's collapsed, and I can't taste whiskey, which is a shame. From a creative point of view, I just don't think it's there. Thank you. Oh, Georgia, do you put up so many exciting, creative, brilliant dishes so far. You're bound to, at some point, take a tumble. And that's what you've done today. So you mustn't beat yourself up about it. Today is not the Georgia we know. No. Tomorrow will have to be if you're in the bottom three and if you want to stay. Yep. Thank you. Next up, Matthew. My daughter Emily and I 
love cooking together and we love watching Heston's shows. If Heston liked my dish, you know, I know Emily would be really proud. He looks like a happy, has a happy face. I'm always happy, Heston. What have you got here? I've got a whiskey sour ravioli. Nice. Nice. There's an excitement to that dish. So you've done something to, to the middle of the raviolis. Yes. Because before when I tasted that filling, there wasn't enough sourness. Yep. And you've boosted that up. Okay. And the whiskey comes through in the, in the foam. There's a connection there. I think it's creative. I think it's visually exciting. Great. I think you certainly hit the brief. Thank you. Not only giving us a dish with flavor, but lots of technique there. So well done. Well done. Thank you. Thanks, guys. <laughs> Next dish, Stevens. So looking down at the plate, there's no denying that it is a bit of a weird combination. Uh, I'm just hoping that it works without the lemon segments. OK, so what is this dish? So it's a pan-fried barramundi with beetroot puree, comfy tomatoes and a, a whiskey sauce. Where's the whiskey sour in that? So the, the sour element um, was going to come from some lemon segments that I just didn't get on the plate in time. Definitely brave. For braveness, certainly score highly. See the beetroot and the barramundi. I don't get any connection to a whiskey sour with that, and it's not sour enough. It's a nice little fish dish. Um, barramundi, beetroot, puree. Um, but is it the brief? Absolutely not. Thanks, Stephen. Thanks, nice lads. So the next dish is Ashley's. <laughs> I'm pretty happy with how it tastes, but whether it tastes like a whiskey sour. Hmm. Um, Ash, are you a big whiskey sour drinker? Um, no. <laughs> Ashley, are you, do you drink? Do you drink? No. So when <laughs> you started listing off cocktails, I was like, oh, God, you want me to make a whiskey what? <laughs> I was going in pretty blind with this one. What's the dish? So I've made a whiskey sour trifle with apricots and rosemary. I love it. So many reasons. Firstly, it's utterly delicious. It's complex, has layers, has a long finish. It's satisfying, it's comfort food. It's ballsy. The apricot and rosemary is ballsy. It, it just all works on every single level. I, I think, guys, I think we would have struggled to produce something like that. That's not an Ashley dish, that's a Smashley dish. Well done. Two minutes! You've got two minutes to go! Come on! Ah. I have all my elements ready. I'm just hoping that the flavours are OK. All I'm thinking is I'm running out of time. I think I'm in trouble. One minute! Ah. I'm feeling a little bit frazzled with my cook so far. I'm still thinking about the words that the judges said earlier about not making this too sweet. I start to plate my cucumber phone. It's not really set. And there is no way that I can include this element on the plate. I'm definitely concerned at this point. 30 seconds, come on! Oh, God! I'm so panicked. My hands are shaking. My heart is pounding. This is it. 10 seconds. Nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Time's up. Well done. 
<laughs> Time's up. I'm looking down the dish, and you know what? I, I, it looks beautiful. It looks, it looks native. Well done. Good job. When I look at this dish, I think it looks like the Murray. It screams river. It screams water. It screams yum. Gorgeous. What is a grapefruit? I kind of feel relieved that it's finished, but the only thing that I'm liking on the dish is probably the plate that I've chosen. I think the worst bit would be to not cook for Heston for the rest of the week. I hope that I'm safe. So the invention test was to be inspired by water and cooking on the banks of the Murray, how could you not be? And of course, as much as we want to see the brilliant dishes, we're also looking for the two least impressive dishes of the day. They will send their makers into this week's elimination. First dish we'd like to taste belongs to Michelle. I look at my dish and then I look behind. It looks exactly like the Murray River, but it's going to come down to flavours. Oh. So what's this called? This is called my inspiration on the Murray River. And I saw the branches going into the water and the logs. So I was like, oh, frozen cheesecake mousse log, a dehydrated fennel fronds, pickled oh, apple cubes, it. and the caramel looks like the water. Oh. So much detail, isn't it? Mm -hmm. and, it's, and it's that there. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's the me. banks. It's the yeah. banks. It's the banks of the river. Yeah, and that's right the river. What I love about it is the fact that when you pour this, it's thick and soupy. Uh, uh. And that, that's the Murray to me. The Murray isn't yeah. a rushing river. It's a thick, slow-moving, yeah. confident, big mm -hmm. brute of a river. And that looks like exactly the same thing. Cool. Nearly got you, George. I'll be back in a minute. <laughs> <laughs> so rude, Michelle. That is so rude. <laughs> He's watching the river <laughs> at the same time. Yeah, it's fantastic. I, I think it's here. Yeah. Mm. You're so mean, you two. Heston, what do you reckon? It's absolutely, utterly delicious. <laughs> Ultimate comfort food, but at the same time, has got this vibrancy to it. There's an element of eucalyptus to it, and, and, and it's, it taps into the very essence of what's important for cooking, and that's emotion. Yep. I think, I think what you brought us is one of the great conceptual dishes we've seen in Australia. Love it, love it, love it. Really well done. Thank really you, good. guys. Thank you. <laughs> I think I've nailed the brief today, and Heston loved my dish. Like, what? <laughs> OK, so next, we'd like to taste Aram's dish. Pan fried Murray cod, tomato, watermelon, cucumber, and their juices. It's a really beautifully balanced dish. The texture of the fish, I love. That watermelon and, in fact, the coriander leaf mm. just gives it a finish that just goes on and on. And just when you think it's finished, you get that little bit of coriander at the end, just kicks in. Fabulous. Best dish you've cooked in the competition so far. Uh, well done, Aaron. Thanks. thanks. Next up, Eliza. Lemon and tarragon jelly with a blackberry sorbet, frozen blackberry and grapefruit segments, and a white chocolate snow. Getting stuck in. I, I, I love that. Uh, I think it looks amazing, and I think the surprise of it and the creativity is there with the tarragon. And I think it was seven, eight years of doing MasterChef, I don't think I've tasted a more impressive sorbet. She'll be proud. Thank you so <laughs> much. Well done, Eliza. Thank you. Ben, your turn to take a leisurely stroll up the banks of the Murray. Thanks. Thanks, guys. To be serving the judges river water, it's definitely not something that I ever considered working with, but, hey, Heston's here. Good 
Is the smell of anything? Mm, yeah. I base the dish on the actual Murray River. Sous vide trout with crispy skin, seared asparagus and seaweed reduction. For me, it's not just the smell. It's the sound. Little splatters of that sort of dirty water on the side there. Just dragging you to the place. Let, let's see if it tastes as good <laughs> as it looks. There's a certain salty intensity in there that I absolutely love. Seaweed, the wattle, crispy skin. I think it's really, really clever. I really enjoyed it. For me, it's about today being here and having that connection. And so, well done. Thanks, Great guys. job. Thank yeah, you. Brilliant stuff. Well Appreciate it. Thank you. I've tried something way out of my comfort zone today. They've really loved it. This will be a day that I'll remember for a long time. Sad. I'm so stoked with how this dish has come together. I'm just hoping that judges can see the concept of the ocean tied into this dish. A creme fresh mousse with a little bit of citrus with some blueberries done a few different ways, salted white chocolate sand and some dehydrated milk shards to look like the ocean foam. It looks beautiful. Yeah. Complex, it's interesting, it's delicious. I loved the burst of acidity that comes from the pickle. I loved it. If I had that in a top end restaurant, it would be a fabulous way to end my dinner. I think what he's saying is not bad. It's like the pinnacle. Oh, that's that's awesome. Awesome. Well done, <laughs> I'm kind of blown away. Like Heston, arguably the most famous chef in the world, said he loved my dish, and to get that kind of feedback is just incredible. <laughs> Awesome job. I've made tomatoes and basil. Come in, stop it. Mm. It's really bright, it's fresh, and it cleanses the palate beautifully. What makes this dish so special is you really explored all that there is about the tomato, but you've intensified it. You bought us a tomato dish that's actually better than the tomato. It feels like it's been sort of sun kissed. I really enjoyed it. Thanks. Nicole. Poached yabby, pickled ginger, fresh peas, and then wasabi snow. It's fresh. Um, it tastes wonderful, and, and I like it. You've connected us with what's going on over there. Well done. And I don't think a mouthful of Murray has ever tasted quite as good as that. <laughs> Next up, Carly. A spicy chilli sand, a cucumber, green apple and basil, sorbet. Oh, yeah. Visually stunning. It's a very thrilling, exciting dish to eat. I'm, I'm really glad today we're not picking a winner because I think we've got some truly Truly inspirational cooking today. That is wonderful and that is delicious. So keep doing it. Thank Amazing. you. Amazing. Thank you so much. Well done. <laughs> oh no. What's happened? What's happened, Sashi? The moose dome looks still looks a bit uh, soft. I need to put it there as long as I, I can to make it really solid hard before I can push it up. The boost is not set. I need to make sure it is in the blast chiller as long as possible. I really wanted to put all the elements up today without any mistakes. If I don't have the mousse ready on time, I'm in trouble. This is not quite the time for counting sheep, but you have... Ten minutes to go. Come on. Ten minutes. Ten minutes to go. Ten minutes. 
It's been an absolute marathon, the entire competition, let alone today. And now I've got to play it up and make it look as good as Heston's. Sponges. I place one of my panna cotta filled sponges on one side of the crumb, and on the other side, I've got my beautiful moose dome. That looks so good, Ben. It's good. I don't have very delicate hands, and you know, I, they're, they're builders' hands. I, I can't believe that I'm plating up so delicately. Look at you, from chopping 4B2s to palette knifing delicate little mooses onto plates, huh? You're flying. That's all I've got to say. <laughs> You're looking good, but don't let me down. Five minutes to go. Come on, come on, guys. My mousse is still in the blast chiller, but I have to start plating all the other elements. Beautiful, Sashi. Pick it up. I only have a couple of minutes left. I need to make sure everything is perfect. I got to do the morning now. Come on, Ben. Come on. Come on. The very last thing I've got to do is fill the malt meringue pillows with milk ice cream. And then sandwich it together. Looks beautiful. Keep it going. You gotta move faster. I'm trying to give myself the winning chance here. Put them together. I might be 16 points behind, but anything can happen in the MasterChef kitchen, and I'm never gonna give up. I will fight to the very end. Ben, listen up. I'm so nervous. Two minutes to go. Come on, Sashi. Let's hope it's set now. My second try on the moose. I'm very nervous now. Come on, come on, baby. Come on, moose, come on. is coming out perfectly. <laughs> it's amazing, the relief. Final touches! One minute to go! I'm so happy I've finished, and I'm so happy with this plate of food. It looks amazing. It's beautiful, Ben. Win or lose, I know that I've just given 100% today, and I'm just so proud of what I've done. <laughs> I'm so excited that I managed to finish everything. Last cook. Over, I'm done. <laughs> I've done Heston's dish. Ben and I became very close in this competition. What we have gone through, it was amazing. This day might change my life. Sashi, Ben, lovely to see you smiling. And let's not underestimate what an absolute marathon that recipe was. But you've done it. You deserve the smiles. It's amazing how much effort you put in, and you never gave up. And I think they've managed to do every single element. So congratulations. Brilliant stuff. We are getting our main bag. <laughs> <laughs>
for me to come through to this stage in MasterChef, I'm very impressed. I can't believe myself. Me, finish Heston's recipe and managed to put up everything on the plate. Even though I have a big lead, Ben is known for the pressure test. So, I'm not sure whether I've done enough to beat him today. Sashi, are you happy? Yeah, I've grown so much in this competition. Uh, first day, I wouldn't have even imagined me putting up this dish in front of you. But on the last day, I'm so glad that I'm able to finish this. And what a day, you've got your family here, you've got one of the greatest chefs on the planet sitting in front of you. It's amazing. The feeling is so emotional, actually. Heston, you watched Sashi throughout this entire cook. How do you feel? Pretty amazed. Thank you. Smashed it. Thank you so much. Sashi, for the last time, would you like to finish your dish for us? Sure. Thank you. Thanks, Sashi. Thank, Thank you. you so much. Thank you. Brilliant, Sashi. There's you go. All right. Prison officer, amateur cook, three-star Michelin dish. <laughs> Unbelievable. Yeah. I am blown away yeah. by what Sashi's done. It's so exciting. And he seems to have got all the elements, mm. you know, on yeah. the plate. It looks pretty damn good. Yeah, so. it looks on there. Shall we? Yeah. Texture of the mousse room looks good. Yeah, it does. You can see the little inserts in there, no? It's very fresh. Uh, there's lots of texture to work through. That coconut ice cream is just the texture of it, the consistency of it. That ice cream was which is beautiful. Yeah. And the sponge texture, he really nailed that. Yeah. yeah you know, the other thing I, I love about your dish and I love about this dish is that overwhelming sense of lightness. Everything is so yeah. light. The ice cream is light, the, the sponge is beautifully light. Obviously, that little malt meringue just evaporates yeah. in your mouth. Shall we score? Yeah. Right, let's get the last dish of 2018 in the tasting room. Let's do it. Okay, thanks, man. There was definitely a time where I never thought I'd be doing anything like this, but I can, and I'm just so excited to be here right to the end. I think my dish is very similar to Heston's, and I'm just so proud of every element that's on the plate. Even though I'm behind, this is where I can make up the points. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> so, your last cook in the Master Chef kitchen. Three-star Michelin dish from Heston Blumenthal. Your family <laughs> looking on. How do you feel? Elated is a word I've been using a lot lately, and, uh, yeah, it doesn't get better than this. Honestly, and you know, actually finding something that I'm passionate about. The passion for food. It's a love. Yeah, I love it so much. Um, 
yeah, it makes me emotional and yeah, it's fantastic. Just looking at these dishes and, and, and the pillows, I'm proud of what you've done because the dish looks like it's been represented beautifully. <laughs> right, Ben, for the very last time, will you finish your dish? I'd love to. Ben, thank you. Thank you so much. <laughs> Enjoy. See you, Ben. Well done. Good job, eh? Good job. Thanks, brother. Oh, that's a good feeling. <laughs> it's a bloody good feeling. Oh, my God. Oh, that is spectacular. How good do they yeah, look? Yeah, they look fabulous. They're so good. It's beautiful. Beautiful. Yeah, it's good. Yeah, it's good, uh, good textures. Now that moves. Wow. Wow. Those pillows are spectacular. Not only are they formed correctly, but they've just got the, the entire mouthfeel of, you know, that crunchy outside, but it's just light as a feather. And that, that sort of oval teeny malt drink flavour came, came through, so it kicked off. It's almost it really set the tone for counting sheep, really. <laughs> <laughs> the panna cotta, fantastic. Oh, yeah. uh, Excellent texture. And then I think that on the actual dish, there were some fantastic bursts of mm. the mix with the flavours that really connected. Yeah. Well, there you go, boys, for the final time <laughs> in 2018, <laughs> the season that's been full of surprises, including your outfit today, Matthew. Thank you very much, Liz. <laughs> Let's go. As I'm taking my dish to the judges, I'm happy with what I've done, but I'm also really worried because I don't know whether or not that ice cream is still hard inside. Oh, oh. So, Derek, what did you cook? Um, I've cooked a deep fried ice cream <laughs> and a raspberry coolie. We know! <laughs> we can't wait to find <laughs> out! For me, the, the, the sponge coating could be a bit thinner, and the ice cream has melted quite a bit. You know, deep fried ice cream has to have ice cream in the middle and not a creamy liquid centre. So, great idea, love it, looks brilliant, but because it hasn't worked, bottom three beckons. Thanks, guys. Feeling pretty disappointed right now. Fingers crossed that I may just scrape through from the bottom three. Anushka, please. Oh, oh, oh. Anushka, what's your dish? I made goat's cheese parfait, beetroot and raspberry sobe, honey glazed cornflakes. Some of the cornflakes are beetroot juiced and 
Kristap. I like the flavour. I, I like the flavour of the actual sorbet. It's got a beautiful kind of refreshing nature to it. And those little beetroot crisps are surprisingly uh, concentrated in a good way. In terms of an idea, I think it's one of the most exciting. Goat cheese, beetroot, you know, the, the cornflakes. Yum! Well done, Anushka. Well done, Anushka. Thank you, Gary. Thank you. I'm glad that thinking outside of box paid off for me. Yeah, it's, it feels great. I like the look of it. I love it. It's, it feels like I'm not, I've ever been or I'm ever going to get onto Mars. Mm -hmm. But it, it, it has a feeling of that. But the whole, the whole idea of it being a black hole and this kind of little, little lime gel planet being sucked into the black hole, I love the fact that when you touch it, the leaf inside actually moves. Yeah. So it kind of feels like a planet. You know, everything you need for human life is there. Water and some greenery. I think that looks great. Yeah, love it. Oh. Try that spherification. It's actually really good. How good is that? I think it's lovely. Oh, okay. what's, I'll just, just, what's that in the middle? Is it a bit of the fudgy stuff? It's like a coconut biscuit. Yeah. I love all the stuff that's been sucked into the black hole. Yeah. It's just a discovery in every bite. Really nice range of textures. Yeah. I, I think that is an absolutely fantastic dish. I think we all agree. It nailed the execution. It, it nailed the inspiration. There were surprises aplenty. It was unique. It was unusual. Yeah. Well, Teresa, since she's come back, has been a totally different cook, I think. And, gee, it's another impressive dish. Right? They've set the pace for the desserts, haven't they? Yeah, in a big way. Right, guys, hope you're enjoying your night. So here we've got the black holes. We've got black coconut sticky rice with caramelised white chocolate and mango. Yes, those gel spheres. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yes. <laughs> That's cool. That looks so cool. Maroon, yours goes up in one minute. That's better, yeah. isn't it? So much better. The new mascarpone is great. So we've got enough cream here. But I really want to test this sponge. Maroon, go. But we've got like no time. So if these chocolate financier sponges aren't beautiful and light, I think we're in trouble. We <laughs> hope we're okay. It's a maroon team's dessert, um, Trent and Heather. What do you think, guys? There's something crazy and comedy about it. I love the way it's skidding across the plate. Heston, in terms of financier, what, yeah. what are you looking for? For me, financier should be light. It, it's heavy. Really heavy. It's really heavy. The Maroon team's dessert. Heston, in terms of financier, what, yeah. what are you looking for? For me, financier should be light. But it, it's heavy. Really heavy. It's really heavy. But just try one of the one of the berries on their own with the juice. It's really nice. Yeah. That and the shiraz with it. You know the feeling of almost being in a wine cellar. Yeah, it's a pity because you push the central end away and suddenly you're really happy with what's going on. Yeah. Matt, Teresa, yes. are you ready? Yeah. Yes. Uh, blue team, two minutes. That's cool, yeah. Shooting star. That's it. Trent, Heather, you're off. Come on, let's go. Thank you. Thank you, guys. 90 seconds before you're on, green team. No doubt. I put a little bit of crumb at the bottom of each and then I place one of the domes and then piping some of the raspberry coulis in there and then I put the mousse on top of that. Fresh fruit on top of the mousse and then I need to connect both domes to make a sphere. Green team, you need to go because... Now? Your yellow team is just serving now. Off you go. Let's go. Go, Brad. The chocolate domes aren't as thin as I wanted, but I'm really proud of myself that I've got 20 of these spheres up, and I still think they look great. Yum! That looks amazing. Yeah. 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 Ye
amazing. Well, here's the green tea dish, I think. Elise has a lot to do with this. It's called Chocolate Stars. Great, great looking dish. I've turned into a little kid because I'm looking at the top of this and it looks like some kind of Martian. Yeah. One eye bigger than the other. <laughs> <laughs> The appearance, yeah, we get the connection. But I just find the whole thing, I think, quite heavy and bitter. Yeah, it's quite impressive. I think it's too thick. There's a lot of chocolate there in that, in that dime. It's a shame, because conceptually, it looks great. Here we go, get the paintbrush. We're halfway through the dessert service, and we're still under the pump. We start our desserts about an hour after everybody else. But we're working really well as a team, and hopefully we'll have it done in time for the next pod. As we're plating, the caramel's looking perfect. I really want the trail of the shooting star to be off the plate and then to have the cake like it's the star. Finally, I add the sherbet and black sesame crumb. I think we've nailed that the dessert looks like a shooting star. You right? Oh, yeah. Got it? Done? Yeah. Let's go. And it looks incredible, but we are absolutely rushing to get these plates up to the pod. This is our shooting star okay. with space junk. Space junk, awesome. Well, here's the blue team's dessert, Mimi and Alina. What do you got there, George? Uh, it looks like Pop Rocks. I know Heston has a cup of these before he goes to bed every night. And when I wake up. From an aesthetic point of view, there's an energy in the dish. I like the caramel. Mm. It's got acidity in it. It's delicious, but it's a big mouthful of sweetness. Though. I know, conceptually, great idea. We all had a big smile on our face when yeah. we looked at it. Yeah. But a wee bit too sweet, even for me. All right, we're going to be up shortly. Right, yellow team. Yeah. Come on. Green team, off you go. Fantastic. Thanks, mate. Good on you. No problem. Red team, you're about to serve your last dessert. So for my Big Bang, I've got a dark chocolate semicircle mould. They're really, really super thin. I just hope it's going to smash perfectly on the plate. So we decided we're going to have a nice little crumb base with the little planets on top of that, and then the very coolly beautiful mascarpone mousse on top of that, and finish it off with some fresh fruit. Red team. Yes, Gary. You got to go. You got 90 seconds. Yeah. Behind, 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 behind. Brilliant. 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 And big head. Thank you so much. The biggest and only concern that I have with the dessert is because we can't see what happens inside the pod, we don't know if it's actually going to smash or not. OK, guys, this dessert's called the Big Bang. It's quite interactive. Um, to get the dish, smash it onto your plate and then dress it with the crumb. Enjoy. Thanks, guys. Enjoy. Enjoy. If it doesn't actually smash on the plate, it's not a Big Bang. Harry and I are just hoping that it does work. Um, the red team's dessert. I think it's the dessert we all want to see. The Big Bang, Harry and Chloe. They want this to be something that's kinetic, that they drop. Let's see, George. Earth, time, matter, George, and plates collide. Um, the red team's dessert. I think it's the dessert we all wanted to see. The Big Bang, Harry and Chloe. They want this to be something that's kinetic, that they drop. Let's see, George. Earth, time, matter, George and plates collide. Oh, I love oh, it! Oh, nice. I love it. That's funny. How cool does that look? And, and then some crumbs as well. That is the Big Bang. Oh. oh, 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 oh I love it. Good oh. And then there was a... I think that is so much fun. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's yum. It's really yum. And the balance 
Dickinson's got the balance right and the acidity. It's exciting to eat. Kids playing with their food, you know. We all had a big smile on our yeah. face. A smile reason. might go when we get the cleaning bill. <laughs> well, <laughs> yeah, exactly. I'm going to remark on how thin that chocolate dome is. Yeah. The texture of the chocolate, the texture of that dome mm. is smoother than the dome we had before. And it gives it almost a backbone, soft bitterness to it. Well, Red Team have given us a, a truly spectacular end to this unique pop-up restaurant in the Star.